Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Charlie Solis. Today I'm going to be doing a reading of a article out of the Scientific America magazine from February 13th, 1915, uh, page number 162. This is about Nikola Tesla's fountain. It's a pretty short one, so just you know, follow along. I'm going to put a couple other pictures up of some other Tesla fountains I found on the internet with this. Some of these are actually Tesla's designs. I think a couple of them aren't. I can't tell you exactly which ones aren't. A lot of these are really cool. A cool different designs they deviate a little bit from the patents designs but all around do the same overall function okay here we go it is a curious fact that old as fountains are they have remained essentially unchanged in principle for centuries artists have lavished all their skill upon them to make them beautiful but engineers have neglected them to be sure independent pumps of small volumetric capacity have been used to create artificial waterfalls and to use the same water over and over again but this principle is old and the spectacle offered to the eye not great improvement over the fountains of olden times two types of fountains have chiefly prevailed the cascade in which a moderate volume of water falls in thin but brilliant sheets over multiplied obstructions, steps, basins, rocks, etc., always in a framework of architecture with abundant obstructive accessories, and the isolated or central fountain in which one or many jets spouted upward fall into the highest of a series of superposed bowls of marble or bronze, and then into a larger one below, and so on, into a broad basin at the ground level. Although every effort was made to save water and to obtain the maximum effect, still we find that in most European cities, fountains are allowed to play only on certain days of the week, and then only for a few hours. It may be safely said that not since the days of the Italian Renaissance has any really startlingly improvement been made in the hydraulics of fountains. Into this neglected field, Mr. Nikola Tesla, the distinguished engineer, has entered, and as might be expected of him, with very striking results. He has recently patented a fountain of entirely new principle, and one moreover in which imposing effects are obtained with very simple apparatus and with a very small volume of water. The accompanying illustration pictures the very simplest form of fountain which can be constructed according to Mr. Tesla's ideas. A shaft runs vertically through the central column of the fountain, carrying at its lower end a propeller and at its upper end an electric motor suitably braced in our illustration we show this propeller shaft contained in a tube the bottom of which is provided with inlets for the water in the main bowl as the propeller is made to revolve the water is sucked in by the propeller blades through the inlets and is urged upward in the direction of the arrows it fills the upper bowl and then overflows in a miniature water flow of impressive size as the circulation is extremely rapid the total quantity of water required is comparatively small about one tenth of that delivered per minute will be generally sufficient in this fountain then we find a great mass of water propelled by the use of only such power as is required to lift it from its normal level through a relatively short space to that from which it overflows and descends as a waterfall or cascade. In that sense, it is a radical departure from historic fountains. The apparatus not only makes the breeding of insects impossible, but it is, in a sense, a very efficient trap. All right, well, that's the end of this one. Like I said, it was a pretty short one. I'm going to do more of these. There's going to be a couple more fountain ones coming. I'm going to do a reading of the actual fountain. If you haven't seen my Tesla fountain steam condenser video, I came up with an idea for utilizing Nikola Tesla's fountain for a water to air heat exchanger to be used with his turbine and the steam cryophorus and steam condenser systems so that it removes the heat of condensation out of the condenser and exhausts it to the air. I believe, is my opinion, it could potentially be one of the most efficient water to air heat exchangers for residential size unit specifically out there because it should require the least amount of water to keep a very very large amount of water in flow and constantly circulating and constantly increasing its surface area to touch with the air and constantly dragging on the air around it and pulling the air with it circulating the air in the area and even says you can put a fan on the top of it so that it encourages the air to blow down across the fountain so that you get a cooling effect from the area in the fountain patent he specifically only talks about using it for cooling surrounding areas but i figured that if it can be used for cooling it can be used for getting rid of heat out of the fountain too through radiative effects conductive effects and even evaporative now that may not be the best because we could lose a lot of water but if this is in like a tower column we might be able to actually circulate some other air through with this i also have a bunch of other cool tesla turbine videos we have actual power output and torque to the shaft for practicable uses but okay i'm gonna end this <laughs> check out those other videos 